Well, the difference <clears throat> between writing those first two albums is I didn't I didn't realize I was writing the first one because you just writing tunes to play at local band nights. So your little half an hour set or whatever it is, you know, you just, we did quite a few, maybe a dozen. We played every week, you know, to like you know, 10 people. And every week, the shittest song in that set would get bumped for another one. Or I never realized I was writing, I was writing an album until Be Here Now. Because I'd already written Morning Glory, effectively. So your first record, you know, it's the, the, the old cliche, isn't it? You get 10 years to write your first record and, you know, 10 weeks to write your second. So you don't really realize you're writing it. You're just doing songs for your, for your little half an hour set at your local band nights. Well, definitely maybe it was done live. That's a kind of anomaly in the, in, the, in the Oasis thing. Not really fair to compare anything to that. That was, that was us in our rehearsal room in a studio which is virtually the same size as the real story. We just bashed it out live, you know. Morning Glory. Again, there was just, all, I mean, I wrote so many songs. It was, that, that's all I ever did. So I still to this day, it's all I fucking do. I've got no hobbies. I've got, I've got, I don't do anything else. Go to the studio, watch football, have something to eat, get pissed, go to bed. That's my life. Like even then, just write, just writing and writing and writing. You know, we went to Rockfield straight off a tour and I had, I had the songs, I was just going to, all the songs had one verse and one chorus, and I was just going to write the second verses when I got there. But things got a little bit out of hand when I got there. So that's why most of the songs have got one verse and one chorus. Uh, and the ones that don't have, the ones that have got a second verse and a middle eight were the ones I'd written before I got there. You know, it was a, it was a blessing in a way. I wrote one of the biggest albums of all time, and we still, we're still a real little, little indie band. After that, when the spotlight of the world is on you, as a songwriter, I, I struggled with that. I, for years, I was like, I didn't know what I should be doing. I didn't know how to do it. And I'd got paid and I wanted to have a fucking good time. You know what I mean? I'd kind of, it took me a good three albums to kind of be not asked about it and just fucking write. You know what I mean? So they were vastly, they were the first two albums is that is, I take it as one period, you know what I mean? Because they were all written pretty much around the same time. I mean, all around the world was written in 1992. The reason those set of songs are on definitely maybe is because they were the ones we were playing live. I'd already written a bunch of others that we just didn't get around to playing live because then it just fucking blew up, you know. It gets more difficult as you as you as you go along being a songwriter. And it should get easier, right? But it doesn't, it gets difficult. Wonderwall, no fucking idea. I have no idea why every conceivable fucking race of person on this planet gets Wonderwall. I guess it's because you those first two records, you're not trying to second guess yourself. You're just writing from the heart. You know, it's instinct. Then after that, you're a fucking big songwriter. I've got an Ivan Novello. You know what I mean? I've got to be doing something a bit different than this, you know. So when you start wearing a hat, getting a fucking tiger. I, I guess because they're coming from a place of innocence and truth. And then you become a big corporate part of the machine. I mean, it's different, for, it's different for everybody. Some people thrive on it, you know what I mean? But I struggled a bit with it, I've got to say. Well, thank God I got those first two albums in there <laughs> and before anybody realised I was a bit of a chancellor. And then by the time I'd learned how to do it properly, it was, we went into the 2000s then. Well, I guess, I guess the one thing you've got to have as a songwriter, I think, is you've got to trust in your own instincts and you've got to be fearless and not fucking listen to anybody else. If you haven't got those things, you should be a professional songwriter that sits in a shed and writes songs, you know, for pop stars. Then you do listen to other people and, you know, then you do give a shit because you're trying to get it on the radio. All the songwriters that I admire never really gave a fuck. Neil Young, Bob Dylan, David Bowie, Macca, John Lennon, Weller. There's got to be a sense of fearlessness about it. And I didn't have that for quite a few years because Oasis was such a brand and I had nobody to kind of lean on. I didn't have a John or I didn't have a Keith Richards or a Mick Jagger. You know what I mean? It was kind of, I was doing it myself, really. It was fucking hard work. I remember being in the biggest band in the world, right? 
between 95 and 97 and thinking, when is this going to fucking end? This is just, it's hard work, you know what I mean? It's like, no, I was writing all the fucking songs, doing all the fucking interviews, coming up with all the ideas for the videos, doing the gigs, and it's just like, I need a holiday and a hug. <laughs>